Hello everyone and welcome to the EMU command station tutorial uh, slash brag. Um, I'm going to basically talk you guys through how I use the command station. I know a lot of people on a lot of different music forums have asked me about it and why I like to use it live and why I think it's such a great hardware sequencer. So this is our basic command station. I have the XL7 which has the extreme lead ROM. You can load three different additional ROMs into it. Um, basically it's an all-in-one music station. It has 128 voices simultaneously. It's got 16 uh, MIDI track sequencer in it which is extremely useful for live and it can handle 32 tracks 32 channels of MIDI uh, simultaneously. Uh, only 16 of, of which can be on the internal sequencer. Um, that's the basic info about the command station which is real nice. It's a rompler not a pure sampler so there's a lot of different things you can do with a rompler which flexibility it, it adds that a lot more voices, the 128 plus. I have also the different sounds that I can use beyond the basic sine square, um, saw waveforms, and so forth. So next, I'm going to lead you through a little tutorial, basic layout of the command station, uh, and how it works, and so forth. So the command station is broken down basically into six general sections. Um, Section 1 up here we have, this is your LCD screen, it tells you basically what you're doing and what menu you're in at the moment. Uh, right now, I'm just sitting in a song or pattern. Um, over here, this is your control surface. Uh, this, these are 16 assignable knobs that you can assign to just about anything. Um, right now, there's four different modes for them. You have Quick Edit, which allows you to edit the patch that you're currently using, uh, the synth sound, in other words. Program, this means you can assign these knobs to anything, even external sounds, and you can quickly navigate and use any knob. Uh, there's 16 of them, so you can use them with channels 1 through 16. Volume, this allows me to control the volume for each of the 16 tracks in the command station. And then Pan, Pan is where I can pan each track in the command station, left and right, and so forth. Down here we have your basic pads. Uh, these are touch sensitive with aftertouch, which is really nice. Most MIDI keyboards don't even have aftertouch. Over here we have 16 track pads, and these are for the sequencer. Um, each track, each button is one track, um, and they use work as mutes right now. So these are activated. Hit them again, you're off. You can also use these to trigger other events on other gear or anything like that if you switch to trigger mode. Up here we have our basic editing section, section which allows you to edit your pattern, um, resolution, swing, so forth, and you can edit your patch, which allows you to change the synthesizer and the synth sounds and everything and so forth. So that's the basic layout of the command station right now. Now in this section I'll demonstrate uh, recording mode. Now in recording on the command station there's three different types of recording. We've got real-time recording, which is your basic plays along with the sequencer as it goes and you go ahead and record it. Next we have grid recording which is extremely useful for percussion sounds and laying down tracks. In the grid mode, uh, as you can see up here, when it's set in grid mode, uh, has your particular note and then these are all the note uh, triggers that were determined on that note. So in this case I have a percussion kit loaded and each percussion kit, each sound has a particular note. So a kick drum will be C3, a hi-hat could be E2 or whatever. You can lay those out however you want. Uh, there's pre-made percussion kits with the classic 909, 808 hits and so forth. And in this case I have a drums, drum kick laid out right here. Uh, one, two, three, four on the beats, downbeat, and that's C3. And as you kind of go through, as I pan through the different sounds, there's different, different hits on different notes. And the last recording method is step recording, which is classic kind of TB303 recording sound where you just each note you hit gets laid into a 16 note. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit here how we record in real time. So, and what's nice about this is about the EBU command station, I can record, turn record on and off as it's playing. So I'm just going to hit play here. As you can see, it's playing now. I have the first three tracks activated by percussion hit sounds. I'm going to scroll up to track six and record a pattern on track six. Um, select my preset, and in this case, I have Edge Metal Acid, and you can kind of scroll through all the different presets you want. Um, there's tons of them you can edit, which I'll show you a little bit later. So on this one, now I'm recording. Test it out. Sounds cool. Um, so I'm going to decide to record it. So I hit real-time record. 
I go up to the pattern here and I can turn my quantize on, set quantize to 16 notes, keep the metronome off because I already have it, and I can just start recording whatever I want to. And see, there we got our pattern. I'll just turn the record off, I'll automatically quantize, and there you go. Well, what I'm going to demonstrate now is some simple percussion recording and how I do it. I usually use the grid uh, recording that I showed you just a minute ago. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, I have a blank pattern that I loaded up here. Uh, I'm going to choose, let's see, just choose a drum kit. I'm going to scroll up until I find the 909 kit. There we go. Now, the 909 kit, as I said before, has your basic 909 sounds. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in the grid recording. You see the grid up here. So I'm going to hit the C down here for the kick, and that takes us to C1. So now I assigned the kicks drums. Just hit these buttons here. Uh, and they appeared up on the top here, and these are the volume levels. Um, I can, when I hit the different notes, they'll turn right on and so forth. Uh, I can adjust the volume for each different kick. Then let's see, I'll take a hi-hat, see how it changed to D1 now, or that's a snare drum. I'll go over to the grid again. Now it's blank because it's a blank slate. slate. Uh, we'll add our snare drums in right here, and then let's find one last hi-hat somewhere. This will work. Now G1, as you can see, it corresponds to G1 here. We'll hi assign those to the off beats. Now we're in grid mode, we can just hit play. And there's your basic grid recording uh, using the drum percussion, which is real simple, real easy to use. All right, now in this part I'm going to show you quickly how to uh, edit a patch or a preset and so forth. So what we're going to do, you select your preset from the preset menu. You can scroll through. We can select just about anything. Um, let's go ahead and stick with the metal acid that I was working with before. Um, then we go over to this button over here. It says preset. Select preset. And now you can go and edit the preset in any way you want. And down on this, the 16 buttons here allows you to navigate through the different types of methods you can edit your presets for. So, you know, we hit name and instrument here tells us the name, we can change the name, and we can also change the oscillators and so forth. And on the command station, the oscillators are actually um, different sorts of wave files because the command station is what is known as a rompler, which uses different types of samples for its instruments. So what we can go through here, um, you, we can have our standard basic wave files, sine, wave, square, so forth, or we can choose something a little more interesting uh, for your for your oscillator. Today we'll go with the Auto D1 Edge sound and on level 1 we'll have a synth sound called Synth 4. Now these are just one of the standard ones that come with this command, uh, command station. These are some of the wave sort of files. Um, let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to try something a little bit different. Let's go over to Soft Synth. And let's try a bell. Very nice. All right. So what we can do, you can go in through and edit all sorts of different things, tuning, ranges, the amp, course delay, filters. And what's nice about the filter section is that each layer can have its own independent filter. Right here we have layer two uh, with a four-pass, high-pass, four-order high-pass filter, which is four poles. Um, there's all sorts of different. These are the famous Emu Z filters, Z-plane filters. Uh, we got EQ, which is a six-order filter, which is six poles, and they go all the way up to twelve. TB or not to be EQ filters, uh, which are really cool. You can get some cool sounds. 
This isn't even editing anything yet. Uh, just some real cool filters and all sorts of different sounds that are right here in the command station. And that's basically editing patches are real simple. Also, if you want to edit quick edit your patches, this is really good for live, you go over to the section over here which is quick edit. And on the patch you're on, you have all your basic functions right here at your hands. You have your filter, cutoff, frequency, your envelope delays, velocity, LFO controls, and so forth. Now, in the LFO section of the preset, it's just really nice. They have a patch cord system, which basically makes the command station almost modular. You can set just about any single parameter, literally from any MIDI parameter to an LFO to whatever, to go ahead. Now what I'm going to do now is just quickly demonstrate kind of how I use the Command Station Live. Um, what you saw from before kind of shows you some of the live features. I can play any uh, patch, just go through the different tracks and go ahead and play the patch that I'm on while I'm playing live. I can even record stuff while I'm playing live real quickly. Um, just do a quick, a quick live set here. Uh, I only got three minutes. Let's say I got a song playing, you know, it's playing along. I got my other synthesizers going over here. Uh, track 16, I have it set to my Yamaha. And so forth. And, you know, I can trigger my samples as we're playing. Let's turn those off. Now let's say I want to add new tracks to blend my songs. We have this cool X-Mix feature on the command station. What I do is I hold down tap, hit play, and it's X-Mix. And what I do is I go to the song that I want to select to pull a pattern from. Remember, each song has 16 patterns. And I, can, I select song 6, currently the one that was playing before, song 5. Say, so hit enter, that's the one I want to do. I select the track from that song, 1. Select the source track, 1. And I'll get that new pattern from that track playing. And that's a real simple live shout out to how the sequencer works and so forth. So, that's how the command station basically works. Quick overview. Hope you guys enjoyed it.